Good morning. Um, I'd like to take a moment to introduce, um, take a moment to talk a little bit about uh, Conda um, as a, the Conda Corporation and also as well as the Astara Open Source Project. A little bit about me, my name is Mark McLean. I'm co-founder and CTO of Aconda. Uh, previously served on the OpenStack Technical Committee as well as uh, former Neutron PTL. So when we start thinking about Aconda um, and you know, the backing of Star Open Source Project, we really start talking about the Neutron operational challenges in terms of you know, how do we manage multiple services, whether it's routing, load balancing, firewall. Um, you know, are we using SDN? Are we using multiple different L2 backends? You know, it's very hard to change them. Um, additionally, you know, how do we handle multi-vendor deployments over time? And you know, and so what happens? You know, when we when we started this project, is we were all working. You know, we we're working at a hosting provider and working in public cloud. And so day two operations were very important for us. A lot of solutions you'll see are very easy to stand up on day one, but in day two, it become very difficult to operate. And so that was the motivational challenge for creating um, a conda. And one of the other things we wanted to do is kind of capture transformation we've been seeing over the last 20 years as you know, the over-the-top network services have been provided. You know, it started in the 90s with voice over IP, rolled through with video and public cloud, hybrid cloud. And so now capturing that and providing different services over the top. So within that, we birthed the Astara project. And really key, um, three key things to that were you know, to be hyperscalable, um, you know, provide con a control plane that can support a large number of endpoints, whether it's public cloud or whether it's containerized services. Um, also to provide the over top network services. We focused on layer three through seven. I'll kind of touch on that in a minute, why um, we didn't go all the way down to layer two. And then additionally, we want to maintain those open source APIs that you expect to find in OpenStack. Um, mainly we want to you know, enable users to continue using the existing tooling they have, not have to write special one-off um, scripts or one-off management or monitoring, you know, make it very easy to use. And so at the heart of the Aconda solution um, is the Astara Orchestrator. Um, it kind of has the affectionate nickname, the rug, mainly from the line of, of the movie The Big Lebowski for the rug really pulls the, and ties the room together. So I think we've kind of all seen this slide in terms of what reference Neutron looks like. You have a, you know, a fleet of microservice agents. They talk via message queue to the Neutron server and the database. Um, operationally, it can be a bit challenging. You have a lot of agents running. You have a lot of agents speaking different protocols. Um, the protocols evolved over different, over different times. They're not always the same. Payloads can be vastly different. And so with Neutron, we simplified a little bit. The L2 agent's still there because we wanted to remain layer two agnostic and to provide layer three and above. And so Astara communicates directly with the Neutron server. Um, Astara itself is a plugin into Neutron. So you have the standard Neutron API, but behind that you have Astara managing layer three. An alternate way of looking at it, um, if you think about the Neutron reference architecture, you, you, know, you have your hypervisors, you have your network nodes. Um, in this case, we've got one up there. Um, typically, the network nodes can become points of saturation, points of failure, um, points of congestion. And with Astara, it's a little bit different. So if we're, orchest if we're orchestrating the network functions um, within the deployment, we can actually run them. So in this case, we're, we're, sh we're showing it as being run um, as service VMs. And if you notice, they're actually spread throughout the deployment. The one benefit to that is that if you have a failure of your network function, um, the impact to tenants is actually going to be mitigated a little bit because it's going to be localized and so it, the impact is a lot less. When we start in Astara itself, Astara supports uh, routing as a service, load balancing as a service. Um, and so a couple of the benefits that you will find, say, over the stock Neutron um, is Astara supports dynamic routing, both OSPF and BGP. More recent releases of OpenStack you know, have added support for BGP speaker. But uh, we've been supporting BGP almost all the way back since Folsom. It was designed from the ground up for IPv6. And as a matter of fact, traditionally, if you were to install uh, Stara, you know, the management plane is almost always v6. It can run on IPv4. But we decided to be for more forward looking. And we wanted to be layer 2 agnostic. Um, there's a number of layer 2 technologies, whether you're your virtual switch is based on OVS your, or Linux Bridge running on the host, um, or you could be running, say, hierarchical port binding with some of the top of rack switching that's available. And so being layer two agnostic enables you to have different data center deployments. You can keep them all consistent. You can also, over time, as you roll out new deployments, you can actually change your hardware mix without having to worry about you know, 
oh no, now I've got to have a different layer three solution. Um, another way of looking at this with the, Star Orchestra, with, this, with the architecture is on the left-hand side, you'll see the orange boxes for Nova, Neutron, um, and Astara. Those are all run with the control plane. The important thing about Astara itself is Astara is an orchestrator, so no elements of Astara actually run within the data path. So if you're looking on the right-hand side, you'll see that you know, there's the physical network. Um, there's, you'll see OVS or Linux Bridge or some proprietary um, solution which is managing layer two. Astar has a little bit of a shim, which really all that does is talks to the interface layer for layer two. In most cases, it's actually a no-op. The standard OpenStack APIs and then advanced services for routing, load balancing, firewall, VPN. And so you know, the real benefit of the pluggable architecture for Star is that you know, we can support new services easily. So in the Mitaka release, we were able to rapidly add VPN as a service. Um, and one of the other features we enabled is actually kind of what we've nicknamed bring your own network function. So one of the challenges with a lot of OpenStack deployments is once the infrastructure is set up, you're locked into the particular solution you have for load balancing, locked in particular solution you have for routing. But what if tenants need a different um, provider for that? What if they need a different appliance? And so with that, uh, an operator could easily enable the bring your own function. So a tenant could actually say, hey, I have my own you know, um, routing router that I want to run. And so you can upload that into the cloud via Glance. And then Astara can orchestrate that for you. S similarly, as it orchestrates routing everywhere else. Um, and within that, it's all driver-based. So currently within the open source tree, we have support for HA proxy. We have support for Nginx, both flavors, regular Nginx and Nginx Plus. Um, we're supporting the VPN as a service API. Um, that's via Neutron. And then we provide, route, and we provide support for routing, um, you know, where those images are based on Linux, BSD. You could have something like Cisco CSR. Um, it is very easy to plug these things in. And, th and that, the pluggability is really key because you know, today we have those network functions available. But what if you want to add a new network function? Astara, because of the way the orchestrator is written, it's very easy to write you know, and provide a little small driver that then, will or that then teaches the orchestrator how to manage that resource. Um, you know, it's all, it's all there, it's all open APIs, it's all, you know, integrated very well in with Neutron, Nova, Glance, and Sender. Another one of the interesting features about the control plane about Astara is Astara was, since we designed it for the public cloud use case, it was designed to both scale up and out. So one of the more interesting things with Astara is that from an operation standpoint, we start talking about day two operations, is you have the ability to, you know, scale up. You can add more threads as you have more network functions. Um, running, or if you know, optionally with VNFs, you can, with the Astara process, it's multi process on a single host, so you can add more processes. Or one of the newer features that we've added recently, you know, started working on the Liberty release and rolled out in Mitaka, is actually with Astara, you can actually stand up different Astara instances on different nodes. They're both multi process and multi threaded, so you have the ability to scale both up and out. And if you notice, the set of uh, VNFs that are managed is automatically repartitioned as you add orchestrators. So if I were to add a third one, it would get partitioned again. And so as a set of orchestrators expands and contracts, Astara is handling this for you. There's actually no active involvement as an operator other than just configuring the service, turning it on. All the orchestrators talk with, with each other and then partition the set of VNFs amongst themselves. Similarly, if I were to contract that set, it will repartition the set. So within the Mitaka release, um, I kind of touched on a little bit earlier, the bring your own network function. We think that's very powerful. We think that's, it enables operators to provide some really interesting services um, to their end users. Um, active active appliances is similar to the HA function, um, HA routing pair that you would find in reference Neutron. Um, it's VRP support. Um, the VPN is a service. And then um, further refinements to instance pooling. So one of the challenges, I think, anytime you're providing um, services via VMs, there's always a little bit of time it takes between when you spin up a VM and when you um, when it's usable. And so what we're able to do with instance pooling is keep a set of hot spares. So in the background, the Astara, orchest the Astara orchestrator is constantly checking in the health of a particular network function. Um, if the network function degrades, it can, you know, spin down that instance, grab a new one out of the pool, and immediately configure it. And your only loss you know, is going to be the time it takes to configure it. If you're running active-active, you, the tenant is likely not to see any impact at all. So 
you know, as far as what a conda, you know, when you take the open source of Star, you pair that with a conda, the company, and the service and support, you know, what we found over time is that it's, it's a Star in a conda is significantly faster. Oops. You know, it's 90%, um, you know, as far as setting things up. Um, the, it scales significantly more, and the cost is significantly cheaper over, say, some of the other solutions on the market. So with that, um, my PowerPoint keeps the one jump to the demo, so we will. So what I've got up here, oops. Uh, So what I've got up here, if you look on the right-hand side, what you'll see is you'll see I'm just kind of tailing the, orchest the orchestrator logs. What it does is it gives you a good idea of just kind of the motion and the flow of what the orchestrator is doing in the background, kind of a little bit of telemetry. And so what I've done here, um, standard vanilla OpenStack install with Astara enabled. So if I go in and look at the network topology, it's kind of easy. We've got, you know, we have one router, we have one network, we have one VM. Um, if I go in and, you know, create a new network, got to make sure I give it. And so in the background, what you'll see is you'll see a star working. You'll see you'll see the log files kind of scroll. If I go click on the router and I add an interface to it and add the other network to it, you'll see a star is watching these changes, is watching telemetry coming out of Neutron. It's going through and proactively configuring um, the routing instance, also adding, attaching the network. So now if I go in and launch a new instance, Can attach it to my new network I just created, and then go. So it's still it's still building. And so from there, you'll notice that the motion that Astara is constantly watching. Um, it's constantly monitoring um, for the VM to be created. Um, and so that's kind of how it works. It, from a in user standpoint, you're not necessarily noticing anything different. From the operation standpoint, you can go in. Um, and if we take a look underneath the hood, you'll see that the instance is available. So now I'm viewing more from an admin perspective. You'll see that there's, there's an Astara service appliance running, in this case, because um, it's running on my laptop, I'm just running one. I'm not running an HA configuration. Um, you'll see that the management network is IPv6. It has the private network, public. Um, and so from routing as a service, that's kind of how we provide it. Um, for testing purposes, there's we kind of created like a little simple Linux box um, image for doing routing. Now, one of the other interesting things is, let me switch over to this deployment. Is So let's say I've got two deployments here. I have this one here, which is very simple. Again, network topology with VPN support. Um, I can go in, uh, and then I have another cloud deployment. Maybe they're two different clouds in different regions, or they're in different offices or data centers. They're all connected in with each other. And so if I go in, um, and so I can open them up. And so like if I click here, you'll see that you know this is 157.2. And if I click here, you know this is 150, this is 155.3. And so via the VPN that I've set up, I'm able to go in. And so if I open a console, Yeah, I can go in and VPN across. But what's interesting as well is because of the way the orchestrator works, um, underneath the hood as an operator, if I ever wanted to go in and poke around at what's going on underneath, you know, I can get access to oops, 
so I can get access to that. So if I take a look, you'll see here that like, oops, you'll see it's it's configured strong swan IPsec VPN. It's doing a key exchange. Um, these are connecting via the link we have within our lab that kind of replicates a wider network. As well as like if I wanted to go through and provision it, it's just to kind of show you how I set it all up. Oops. This is, you know, created policies, created the service groups endpoints. Um, what's interesting about this is that you can actually use this feature and then you can use it to, say, bridge an OpenStack cloud into, say, Google Compute VPC or Amazon AWS VPC as well. Um, the reason you can do that, say, with a star that you may not be able to do that, say, with, um, you know, the, the default reference implementation is a star supports PGP underneath the hood and so that you can actually create the IPsec peering, and then you can, and then additionally create the VGP peering session, so you can exchange routes and get full connectivity. So, so with that, just kind of to wrap up again, um, you know, a star was designed for hyperscale scalability, um, provides a control plane, you know, for clouds with lots of endpoints, whether it's containers or whether it's VMs. The use case is very similar when you have lots of use um, endpoints. It's over the top network services. Today we have routing, we have load balancing, we have VPN. Um, within the upcoming cycles, we're talking about adding support for additional network functions. The nice thing is you don't have to wait for us. You can write a plugin and a star can suddenly become aware of a new um, service and network function. Um, and it's all open source APIs. Um, Aconda, it's, Aconda itself as a company provides services and support. Um, we're happy to talk to you about how we can customize and work and provide plugins. Um, thank you very much.